So, first of all, tell me your full name. Henry Leonard Boyd Sr. And your birth date? May the 14th, 1924. Great. And where'd you grow up? Where did you grow up? In Memphis. You were born in Memphis? Born and raised in Memphis. Okay, great. And uh, where'd you go to, to high school? Tech High. Tech? Tech. Tech High. Okay. And that's in Memphis too? Right. Okay. I'm not from here, so I don't know. <laughs> um, now, um, tell me about your, your years of service in World War II, like from, did you enlist or were you drafted? No, I was drafted. I went in the 29th of January of 1943 and came out the 30th of September 1945. And uh, what unit, uh, I see you're in 8th Air Force, but what the... Uh, I was ball turret and waist gun on B-24. What, uh, what unit were you in? The 458th Bomb Group. Okay, thank you. Norwich, England. Based where in England? Norwich. Norwich? Okay. And how many missions did you fly? 31. Can you walk me through, uh, I guess when you got to England at least, and tell me some of, about some of your missions? When I got to England, what? Tell me about some of your missions. Well, the English people were very nice, and, and the countryside was pretty, and uh, everywhere you went there was a base. Air Force or some kind of a base. So, uh, like I say, I don't know how in the world that island stayed to float with all the bases on it. <laughs> but uh, we were up there at the White Cliffs of Dover. Is where we were stationed. It's really pretty when you come back across the English Channel. Okay. You see them White Cliffs. It really looked nice. Yeah. Um. Tell me about, uh, do you remember your first mission? First mission was right over where later on was the D-Day. And uh, that was the only mission that had an injury, had an injury on the first mission. And I, boy, I thought this was going to be tough, you know, but we came out lucky the rest of the time. So. What happened when... Who was injured? The boy was from Ohio. He was our uh, manager on the plane, you might say. Went in his left wrist and came out right at his left elbow. I don't know what it, whether it was was a, a bullet or whether it was flat. But he came home and got a discharge. And uh, how did you feel about your first mission? Well, I felt like this was going to be a tough go, you know, uh, getting injured on the very first mission. But as it turned out, it was kind of tough on some of them, but we all came through, so it turned out all right. Did you feel like you were just doing your job and... That's it. Just doing what I was trained to do. I'd do it again if I... If the need be, even at my age. Oh, good. Anything I can do for my country, I'll do it. Thank you. And, uh... You, what was your most, uh, memorable mission? Well, there were several of them, but I suppose the, the highlight was going to Berlin. Went to Berlin twice. Uh, there was 
some get up and go to some of the others due to the flak in the fighters, but I guess that was probably the one that's because it was their capital, you know. They're all memory to a certain extent, just like Flack Alley going down to the, their main source of uh, manufacturing. And uh, you always dreaded it. Wherever you were going, you dreaded it to begin with, but it didn't turn out as bad as you thought it was going to. Do you remember ever seeing it? other planes hit and going down? Remember what? Any other aircraft being hit and going down? Yes, very distinctly. Our right wing on the flight, I forgot where we were going. But I didn't hear a noise or anything, but I was on the waste gun that, that time. That plane f fell in three parts the front end, the center, and the tail, and it started tumbling. All three was tumbling. And when the plane went down, we always looked for parachutes, and we counted them, how many parachutes came out. Well, there didn't any, 10 of them, and didn't see a chute come out, so uh, I guess they lost all 10 men on that one. That was on our right wing, we about as far as from here to end of the building, I suppose. So it's very distinct. I know that's hard to think about. That was the worst one. I guess we were pretty close to, yeah. to that team. What do you remember about your last mission? Coming back and kissing the ground. It wasn't, it wasn't like being in America, but it was being back on safe land. Yeah. When you get close to the end, you start counting. D-Day had to my 28th and 29th mission, and it, 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 they were easy ones. So I had said, so well, I got two more to go. <laughs> you remember, uh, Many of your crew members? I remember them all. What can you tell me about them? Well, I don't know. I guess they all felt like I felt on the mission. They, they did their job. Must have done it pretty good. Uh, I don't know that we shot down any planes. We didn't, we shot at them. And so did a lot of other people. Uh, everybody just, just did their job and came out with no injuries, so we were all fortunate. Were you able to keep up with your with your buddies after the war? Only one. He moved to Memphis. The others, I saw one of them when I visited Oklahoma. And the others are different parts of the country, Texas, New York, New England, Kentucky. And I didn't, I, I heard from them occasionally, but I didn't see them again. As far as I know, they're all gone. Uh, there's only one that I don't know. He was a tail gunner. And I don't know whether he's still alive or not but the others are all gone. I was a very, very fortunate to live to this age. Yeah. Um, now, what would you do when you were back at your base and, and if you had any free time? Oh, we'd get out and we'd throw the ball around a little bit, sit around and gab. Uh, just 
more or less nothing, just whatever came along. Occasionally at night we would have the next day off, we'd go go into town, eat some of the good fish and chips. Boy, those are delicious. The fish and chips, in case the person doesn't know, is fish that they cook in uh, some little out of the way place and we wrapped it in newspaper. They didn't have all this fancy stuff they have now and all these restaurants and all. That's what you got, fish and chips. Boy, it was good and hot, you know, and it was delicious. Good as any food you ever tasted. <laughs> and uh, most places, if you had beer, it was hot. And uh, if you wanted something stronger, you got some old, I don't know what you should call it. <laughs> They didn't have all that fancy stuff we have over here. But we drank it and we got a little tight a couple times, you know. Because, you know, you live tonight, tomorrow you may die, see. That was it. You, you didn't much, much uh, think about anything else. I mean, you didn't worry about it. It was just a job. And if it was your time, it was your time. And that's pretty much the feeling of all of us. Yeah. Tell me about uh, when you uh, when you came home. What did you do after you came home? Oh, I went back to my old job of cutting meat. And uh, from then on, I, I did that. I had a couple of odd jobs. Sometimes I had two jobs. And, just uh, made a living for my my family. I started having a family, so uh, I had to work. Just, uh, but it was nice. I, we we had a wonderful family, all of them. Tell the me ones, about your family. The ones before us, us, and the ones that are coming after it. Just couldn't be beat. Tell me, tell me, when did you get married? Okay, I'm gonna tell you something that I tell everybody. I got in two wars in a week and a half. And they said, well, how'd you do that? I said, well, we got married on the 26th of November, 1941. Pearl Harbor was December the 7th, 1941. That's a week and a half. Yeah. And the wife, a little later on in life, I was telling that story. And she said, yeah, you still hadn't won one of them. <laughs> so that's, that was another little tale. So we, this last November, we were married 79 years. Wow, 79. A week and a half before Pearl Harbor. How old were you when you got married? 17 and a half. <laughs> and how old was she what, at that time? How old was? How old was she when you got married? When I got married, yeah, so let's say 17 and a half. And your wife was? 17, 18. 18. Yeah. Yeah. Well, congratulations on that. We both went to tech. Um, I had three wonderful kids. I mean, couldn't be beat. Couldn't be beat. What's your wife's name? Hester. Hester? I'm Henry, and that's Hester, H and H. Okay. <laughs> and three kids. Three wonderful kids, the best in the world. That's my second one. <laughs> and their names are what? Henry Jr., Vicky, and Kathy. Okay. We'll get that on video, so. <laughs> My youngest one died 20, almost 21 years ago with cancer. Oh, but I got my two wonderful, one boy and one girl who lived. Well, good. Um, Vicki, do you have anything that I ought to ask him about? Um, where were the different places you were stationed, Daddy? Different places you were stationed? 
The what? what did, where were you, where all were you stationed? Oh goodness, mostly out west. Idaho, Denver, Colorado, Boise, Idaho, uh, uh, Tonopah, Nevada, Sacramento, California. Most of mine was out west. What was your favorite? Uh, uh, Denver was I, I, was my favorite. I like Denver too. Oh, it's a nice town. Yeah. It was then. I don't know how it is now. It's crowded now. <laughs> um, but it's pretty. I started out in started out in the uh, 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 Miami Beach. Florida went from there to Fort Myers, Florida, then from Fort Myers to Denver. So, so pretty much the western part of the country. Yeah. One last question. What would you say is your favorite part of, or maybe your most memorable part of your service during the war? My favorite part? Yeah. Well, to getting out, I guess. Coming home. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that one before. Uh, well, I don't know. There was a lot of good times in there. It wasn't all war. There was, we got to visit places, you know, see things, meet people. Uh, I don't know. One of them, uh, strikes my memory very very clear was uh, Miami Beach when we first went in it had a beautiful uh, theater there and we all the whole group went to the theater not to see a picture but some program I think it was USO and they wanted a volunteer to lead singing and singing. So this friend of mine, he volunteered me because he knew I was, I had sung. So I got up there leading and singing and I had the opportunity to go to USO. I said, you can't win a war singing, you got to do some shooting. So I, I went on to you know, my gunnery school instead of USO. So I just wondered how that might have turned out, but I, wa I wasn't sorry I did what I did. So when you led them in singing, what, did, what were you singing? When I what? What were you singing? What song? Do you remember? Oh, well, the one I remember the most was God Bless America. You know, and uh, of course, uh, you know, when you're in the service, there's a lot of volunteering, but generally it's with somebody volunteering you. You don't volunteer. Somebody volunteers you, and that's what happened. <laughs> I got you. Oh, I do have one other question. Um, what advice would you give to younger generations today? And it could be anything. Well... I would say the first thing is appreciate what you've got and appreciate how you got it. And if you don't know, you need to learn because there's a lesson in the past. And if you don't learn it, you, you're going to miss out on the future. Uh, people, I, I think there more and more are learning that but still is something they need to teach in school. They need to teach American history in school so that, well, so they might get the feeling like I feel. And uh, that's, there's no place like home in America's home. Thank you. You're very welcome. I appreciate it. Glad to get to meet you and glad to get to uh, take your portraits and hear your story. Um.